Does this sound like you? You have a loved one that's discharging from the hospital soon. Because of insurance, you need some DME items. So you scramble. You go to your local CVS and search everywhere. But is this the right one? What do y'all think? You think, is this, is this the right one that I need? In this episode of Charlene Care Pods, we have a special guest, Kingsley Bryce, CEO of Affordable Medical Supplies. He's going to walk us through what DME is, the payers, and help us clarify some things. It's a rare condition this day and age to read any good news on the newspaper page. Love and tradition of the grand design. Some people. I got my brother here, Kingsley. Uh, man, thanks for coming on, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's always good to, to, to chat with my brother. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So just, you know, if you don't mind, just walk us through what is DME. Like yeah. The, the DME, I know people think of DME as like walkers and going to Walgreens and yeah. picking up walkers. But in a nutshell, what is DME? So DME stands for durable medical equipment, right? Um, long story short, a long version of that is it's essentially the, all the equipment that you need to support you and aid you in the home or even outside the home, right? Mm. So there's things like you talked about, mentioned your walkers, wheelchairs, and commodes, and there is a process behind that. Now there is the simple version that's just retail, mm-hmm. and then there's a the complex version that is insurance. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we can dive a little bit into that, but that their umbrella of durable medical equipment involves, you know, hospital beds, wheelchairs, mm. walkers, canes, but it also involves catheters and oxygen mm. and enteral feeding and, and insulin and mm. things like that. Mm. That's under the umbrella of d- durable medical equipment. So wow. now not all companies do all things. Gotcha. But all of those things are durable medical equipment. Gotcha. If that makes sense. So if you go to like, so say for instance, I like how you broke that down as retail and insurance, right? Correct. So yeah. say for instance, you're going to like an actual physical DME store. Yeah. Right. So the loved one just had surgery, they need a walker. Yeah. What's the difference between like what you'll see at retail mm-hmm. and then what insurance? Maybe we'll break down retail. Yeah. So, um, so for, for instance, we have a brick and mortar store here okay. in the Plano area that you can walk in and buy things. Um, now, obviously, there's stuff like Amazon and whatnot, but from those that you come in and buy things, like you have, there's no limits to your options, right? Mm. You can get what's most comfortable for you. You can get what you like. Now, with insurance, we as our company, we have a contract with Medicare, okay. right? And so Medicare tells us how much they're going to pay for a certain item. Okay. So there is not as freedom to get whatever you want. There is a limitation in what they will pay for. Gotcha. So let's just say that you wanted, most people come in and they want an upright walker. Right, you can actually go on Medicare and find this how much they'll actually pay. Hmm. So the reality is, insurance only pays probably forty dollars, hmm. whereas uh, upright walkers cost six hundred. So when people think that, oh, you know what, well, my insurance says that they'll cover it, they say that, but you need to go and read and figure out, okay, well, what, how much will they actually cover for? Because the reality is, it's not going to cover all of it. It will cover probably a very, very small fraction of what's actually paid. Wow. Right. So now us as the provider, we have to go and find items that fall within that range that can mm. be covered. And a lot of times, like post COVID, it is very hard to find items as cost has been rising and insurance reimbursement has been decreasing. So there's that small mm. window of where people can get what they need or they want, mm. you know, and what they need. So whereas retail, again, if you need something that's most comfortable for you, it's Boom. a cash. You can get it, no problem. Wow. If you have the cash. Now a lot of realities that people don't they struggle with that stuff, so that's where insurance comes into play. So mm. we do both to cater to both sides of the community. You know, we try to help out as much as we can, but education is really key. Yeah. You got to know, you know, what insurance provides, and I know you do that a lot yeah, yeah. by communicating and educating people. Hey, what does your insurance get you? What does it cover? So that you can tell your family members, and they can kind of be wow. fully educated. So. What What do you think are the biggest like differentiators between? going on Amazon and purchasing something and yeah. then going to like a retail store. Like what are the, what yeah. do you feel like are the differences just in general for families? So one of the reasons that I think we're still here is just that personal interaction. Um, mm. There is a big portion of things that, you know, people have come into my store and say, hey, I got this off of Amazon. Nobody communicated to me how it works. Nobody told mm. me about the warranty. Mm. No PT educated me on how I need to use the item. Mm. It's just something that you see and you get. Now that's good for getting the product, 
how to use it and how to make sure it lasts you long enough and takes care of your mom or your dad or even your younger brother or mm. whoever is injured, those details aren't necessarily there. Wow. Obviously, you can have YouTube and learn yourself, but there is a benefit to having somebody who's worked in the industry and educated them to say, hey, here are actually some other options you can actually take too. Gotcha. Right? So a lot of people come into my store, an incident happens, you know, accidents happen. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't prepared for that. Yeah. And so they come in like, hey, my mom just, you know, she just fell into the hospital. I've never done this before. Yeah. yeah. That's where we come and say, okay, hey, no problem. You know, what your doctor say? Great. What's the steps for recovery? Hmm. Based off of that, here's the proper items that you probably need. Wow. Right? A lot of times you can't get that off of just going online. That makes so sense. So for our community, that's where we still really benefit. Um, we do help people by educating them and just say, hey, no worries. Like, Let's guide you through this process. Let's kind of come alongside yeah. you and help you to navigate this yeah. course. That's so. cool. So mm -hmm. if someone's watching this in California or New York or Seattle, yeah. like they can know, okay, sometimes going to your local DME yeah. is actually beneficial yeah. instead of clicking a button. Yeah. And going on. There's, still, there's still big benefits. I think that That's cool. um, people in this era, it's obviously a new era that we're kind of entering into and obviously and we can talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. later, how much has changed mm -hmm. in the industry, mm -hmm. but nowadays I think it's more instant demand, and a lot of things that are lacking is that personal touch and personal mm -hmm. care, which I know you, you really hone in on, but that does matter in those delicate moments. You do need that little bit of extra you know, conversation guidance. and guidance that will help you navigate through, okay, how do I approach this situation versus just clicking and purchasing. That's good. There is a little bit more that you can do to make sure that your loved one is taken care of. That's so, good, that's good. Yeah. So, okay, so retail, now insurance, right? So yeah. what is the process of like, you know, um, doctor, you know, writes an order for Correct. a walker. Yeah. So like walk us through, because we get this, you hear this a lot, a lot of the frustrations of like, yeah. we can't get this or we can't get this. Yeah. Can you if, you, if you don't mind, walk us through like a patient who just had uh, a knee replacement. Yeah. And doctor's ordering a walker. Yeah. What does the DME company usually need sure. in order to get that ball rolling? Yeah. So to begin, um, I know a lot of kind of myths that happen is that mm. kind of whatever is written on paper is what insurance covers for. Ooh. And the reality is that that's not always true. Yeah. Um, a lot of the doctors are educated in their field 100% and they're excellent in what they do. However, they're not necessarily educated in our field, DME. DME and insurance is a different yeah. kind of combination that a lot of them aren't really trained, and then they don't need to be, because mm -hmm. that's not their department. Mm -hmm. They do write the prescriptions, but after that, there is almost sometimes a gap between what's written and what insurance provides for. So um, mm -hmm. in that, right, let's just say that for us, we have three easy steps, right? If you want to start an order with us, you need a prescription, right? Ins Medicare requires that you have a letter of medical necessity from your primary care physician, okay. right, in order to start the process. Once that information comes into us, we take your uh, prescription as well as your insurance information so that we can process everything. Once you start processing, we'll reach out to the doctor's office because insurance requires that we do have notes. There are very, very specific notes for certain items that they require. Mm -hmm. And so we have to go and communicate with the doctor to get all that information in. Once we have all that information into your file, um, then we're able to process it either through a prior authorization, sometimes they don't require it, so we can process it for the sake of just making sure that when they do an audit, we have all the information. Mm -hmm. We don't typically like to come back to patients um, to collect, right. so we like to have everything on the front end. So we're right. pretty thorough with like, hey, your doctor needs to have this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. We'll communicate that to them, and that gets back to us. Um, so that's the second step. Third step, I would say, is once that's been processed, as our company, we'll communicate to you every stage that we're at and also when you can pick up an item and when to do. Now, we'll also try and communicate what items are covered with your insurance. Mm. So not That's everything, is, yeah, not everything is covered. I know that you see something on Amazon or you see something on Google that you like, but that's not always what's covered, right? Yeah. Insurance covers for an amount, not a product. Hmm. That's a good point. And that's, that's what the connection I think people miss. It's not a product, it is a number, a dollar amount. Right? It's mm. almost like a coupon that they give you. Hmm. That's say, really hey, good point. here's your coupon to go and you know find a place that will, that will take this coupon and give you the product. So not every facility does all things. So hmm. there is a little bit of you know extra legwork that you do have to do in hmm. finding the right provider and finding the ones that are in network and finding the ones that can process. And there's that step process. Wow. But it's a part of the game, right? Yeah. So either retail or insurance. But just know insurance takes a little bit longer. Wow, uh, yeah. And, and that's just, you pay less, but yeah. it takes longer. Right? So then the gaps are really, that's a good point. So the yeah. gaps are really between what the doctor is writing and, to, right. and the DME. That's the yeah. first gap. Yeah. Second gap is then once insurance is approved, what 
product can you really get for Correct. what the coupon they gave you? So those are the two gaps that we see a lot, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's it's missed. I mean, we, we we try to communicate that to patients all the time, and we don't expect them to understand. So that's why right. that's where we come in and ha let's explain to you this process. I do a lot of teaching different you know residents and facilities to let them know, hey, here's what your insurance can afford you. Hey, I want X, Y, and Z. Okay, great. Well, they only cover for this. Now we do have these products, and these are cash. If mm -hmm. you don't have cash, no worries. You can still go through insurance. Mm -hmm. So there is that balance of you know communicating with the patient, communicating with their family, mm -hmm. and then the physician to figure out what's the best care package for that patient. So that's a good point. So so talking about another frustration that we probably get a lot mm -hmm. is hospital beds. Yeah. Yeah. So like what Medicare covers. So in our world, we always say like, oh, if you go to the hospital, you know, it's better that the ho you go to the hospital. When you're in the hospital, mm -hmm. let the social worker there order your hospital bed. Because yeah. sometimes it's quicker than actually you being in the home. Like, yeah. is that a true myth or is it like real? Is there reality to that or just curious? So, so there's a lot, and I'll give you guys kind of a lot of the behind the scenes. The reality is that um, for Medicare specifically, Medicare pays on hospital beds at a monthly rental. Right, so it's not a purchase. Hmm. So again, you can go online and you can find out exactly how much they pay. Right now, it's probably in the range of less than seventy bucks a month. Hmm. Now, these hospital beds cost well over five hundred to six hundred dollars easily. So you know, as most providers, you realize the struggle that they have, and that's there's a cost profit deficit there that is not going to be met. So the hospital that you're staying in in the hospital. It's not the bed that you're going to get That's from true. most providers. Yeah. You're not going to get that when you go out. Um, and so you have to under just kind of shift your mindset to understand, okay, hey, you know, I'm not going to get the same level going through insurance, but I will get the support, right? So for us, you know, we have, as they pay for a monthly rental, there's a lot of stipulations that go into that hospital bed. Again, these aren't things that providers are supposed to know. Yeah. Doctors aren't going to know. They just write the prescription. And that's that's their job, which mm. is fine. But where our job comes in is explaining that that difference of saying, hey, your insurance will cover for a hospital bed, a semi-electric. They don't pay for full electric hospital mm. beds. And they do it on a monthly rental. Now, if you ever go into a skilled nursing facility, hospice, yeah. or back into yeah. a hospital, in Medicare will stop paying your DME provider and they have to go collect that bed. Hmm. And whoever is responsible, so a hospice, skilled nursing facility, or a hospital is responsible for providing that hospital bed. Wow, so there's a lot of sense. transitions that come into it. So it's not like, hey, I'm going to the hospital for a month, you know what, I'm going to come back to this hospital bed. No, the DME is technically supposed to go out, pick the hospital bed up. Boom. There's a lot of transitions in there. So, wow. like I said, when you get into insurance, there's just a lot more rules and regulations that you have to abide by. Yeah. And it can be sometimes inconvenient. Um, to do, but and that's where if you have the cash, it does help because yeah. think about not having to worry about that. You just come back home to the hospital bed, you go into hospice or whatever it might be, you know, there, there are options there. And even for us, we have rentals, so it's just keep the bed, you know, wow. whatever happens, it'll be there. If you're done with it, just call us to pick it up. Um, but yeah, there's nuances. So that's a good point. So rentals now, kind of like how does that yes. work? Because that, I mean, that could, I could see that burden of okay, my loved one just came from the hospital, now yeah. they're going to a sniff, yeah. that's not their hospital bed, oh, right. they don't have a hospital bed, now they're going home. So like yeah. rentals, like how does that, yeah. how does, does that, does that alleviate and relieve some of the stress that you yeah. see from big families? Time, big time, So we've made a shift, I think, obviously been in this industry for 20 years, yeah. um, but just seeing that in this current industry, a lot of times there's like two points that people realize that, okay, well, I just had an emergency and I need a solution now. Yeah. Right. With insurance, like I mentioned earlier, insurance, it just takes time to process. It's a reality, right? But if you need an item now, rentals are the best way to give you time to figure things out. Hmm. I need a hospital bed now. Great. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Let me just rent one. Even if it's for a week, even if it's for a month, give me time to think and process, right? The other side of that is that, well, whenever I'm done, and there are times that maybe someone gets better, or unfortunately, sometimes somebody passes away. Yeah. Now you're left with all this DME equipment that you have to have to figure out how to sell, hmm. figure out how to move into storage. Uh, it's just a reality that happens, right? So sometimes people don't want to be left with either side of that ball. Hmm. And so rentals are an easy way to say, great, when this is done, I can have this taken Boom. away. And I don't have to worry about looking at, you know, something that reminds me of their passing, it's gone. Or it can be like, hey, I also don't want to remind them of the season that they were in before. They're yeah. better now, let's remove everything. So there's benefits to rentals that are short term, quick solutions, yeah, um, yeah. but also long-term solutions too. That's when really you're thinking great. about the future of like, well, I don't want to have to have this 
um, with me, yeah. you know, yeah. all the time to remind me what we, what we just went through. Wow. So that's rentals good. are beneficial. What are some, are, so I know hospital beds are probably the most f frequently rentals. Are there like other yeah. types of equipment that people use like they yeah, like to rent? Yeah, so we do, and this is not, again, people think lift chairs are fully covered. The reality is they're not mm. fully covered. They're lift chairs, talk about lift chairs. Yeah, lift chairs are, are phenomenal. So the difference between a lift chair and a recliner is that a recliner will go back, correct? Yeah. A lift chair goes back and it stands you up. So let's just say your mom or dad, obviously, when they get older, it's, it's a little bit difficult to stand yeah. up when yeah. you have a sit seating position. A lift chair raises you up to a spot where that process is kind of eliminated. You can kind of just almost walk out yeah, of the chair. Yeah. So it's very beneficial for that. And also, we have lift chairs that are helpful for people who have arthritis or even major swelling, yeah. um, yeah. where their feet may swell in the morning. Mm -hmm. A lift chair can put them in a position where their feet are higher than their heart. Mm. And you have, it's called a Trendelenburg feature, where that blood will now rush Boom. back yeah, and help reduce the swelling. So there's additional features that lift chairs provide where, you know, most recliners don't. Yeah. So those are helpful because, again, you can rent them. If you just have someone who just had an orthopedic surgery, it's huge. Wow. A lot of times they can't sit past a certain degree, 90 degrees. So you need to have a seating position that allows you to reduce that. That's so really lift cool. chairs are helpful. Um, people who have cosmetic surgeries are helpful. So um, just for sitting down and standing up, reducing that strain on your abdomen mm. during that surgery. So there's a lot of benefits to lift chairs. Wow. And rentals are always big, especially if you're not ready to commit to a full one. Yeah. Just try it out. If they like it, they, they can get it. If they don't, yeah. just send it back. So then, so insurance doesn't cover lift chairs, or they Correct. do? Correct. So insurance, it, it is a very, very complex process. Now these items are you know well over thousands of dollars. And what's yeah. hard coded on those is gonna be the lift me seat mechanism that only covers maybe two to three hundred dollars. Wow. And the rest of the fabric and all of that is not necessarily covered unless you do, again, not something everybody needs to know, but there is, yeah. you know, there's miscellaneous codes and you try to get to that. It just takes a lot longer right, to get. Right, That's right. a reality. And so yeah. um, doing it on a smaller scale is a little bit more beneficial because it's just time wise. Right? Yeah, yeah, if you have yeah, the time, yeah. you can sit and wait. It yeah. may take a couple months, but you can get there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. let's redo that. So. Let's redo that again. Yeah. So does so does uh, no? You're good. No, you're good. So um, so so, insurance doesn't cover lift chairs, or they do. They cover portions of lift chairs. Okay. Right. So again, and it's all out there. You guys can go look it up. Um, free information, but they cover a seat lift mechanism, which is the standing function in a chair, mm -hmm. but it is not the fullness of the chair. Mm -hmm. Right. They don't have codes that cover the cushions or the padding or the reclining function or the stand, you know, all those functions are not fully covered. So there's a portions of it that are covered. Hmm. So for us, it's just easier for us to give a discount. Right? Or a rental. Yeah, or a rental, right? Wow. So it's the same value of me giving you a $200, $300 discount. You'll still have to come out of pocket the that's, rest of it. That's crazy. Yeah, so. That's there's crazy. a lot of things I don't, you know, fully want the public to know. But yeah, yeah. in reality, that's what we're here for, to help you educate you on what does your insurance provide you, right? So. Yeah. There's not experts. You don't need to be expert. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Yeah. To help communicate yeah, that yeah, to yeah. you. So, so I know, you know, you'd be my brother. Yeah. Like, I know, what do you feel like the industry needs, right? So there's an aging population, mm -hmm. right? That's it's continuing to increase. Yeah. Why do you think DME companies are still, they're still viable in this industry? Like, why do you feel like yeah. they should, they should be heard? Just in general? Yeah. So I think that, for us, right, I think we still introduce the, the, the aspect of care, mm. right? Now there is care that is afar, but I, I believe that the best care is in person. Best one you can provide, yeah. right? It's one thing to have dinner with a loved one over Skype or Zoom yeah. or, you know, but when you're in person, there's a different experience that you have. Yeah. In the same way that when you come into our store, there's an experience that you have that gives you understanding, that gives you time that gives you ability to ask questions and have mm. them answered and someone can explain it to you and let's just say that you some of you have a very stubborn mother or father that you know they won't listen to you they won't listen to you but <laughs> when stubborn. you bring them to the store <laughs> and they get to see their different options they see that their need for it it does get them th past that threshold of saying hey you know what this may be a good option for me really or cool. you know what like i didn't think about this or hey you didn't show me that but i actually like that over there wow. right they get to see and feel and touch the different options they have for support. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I love what we do in the sense that we have a lot of people who came in. I had someone who came in yesterday, um, lovely couple from, from England, hmm. and it's just the two of them together. They wow. just take care of themselves, but they came in and they were able to sit, and we spent like probably 30 to 45 minutes with them, just showing them the different options and 
her mind was starting to open up of like, wow, I didn't realize that all of this was available to me. Yeah. You know what? Let me go and talk with my husband. We're going to figure out something that we can get and we'll come back. Right. Wow. That aspect of the cool. care we were able to provide gave them the ability to now say, you know what? I do need help and I feel comfortable That's massive, making yeah. that decision. Yeah. Wow. So. I think it's the same thing that people think about, like why malls are still around. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, yeah, true malls true. are still around because the people love the interaction with the customer service. Yeah, exactly. The person that you're going to exactly. shop, you look, you can try this on, yeah. you can not try this on. I mean, Amazon's still going to be around, sure. right? Yeah. But there's something different about going to the mall and trying on yeah. your shirt. The interaction is still valuable. I yeah. mean, you know, as far as you think in the next three to five to ten years, the human interaction is still necessary. It's still necessary. A necessary component. So that's honestly why we're, we're still here. Yeah. A lot of companies aren't anymore, but the yeah. reality is that Look, we're here for the community. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're not a national company. Yeah. You know, we're not trying to be really. We just yeah. want to serve our community because the reality is those are the people that are closest to us. Yeah. So. Yeah. Man, that's good. That's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Sweet. Man, thanks good guys for uh, yeah. thanks guys for hopping on and and, and uh, hanging us hanging out with us, mm-hmm. uh, Kings. Man, Maybe. probably we'll do we'll do this again. Some yeah, more. we definitely will. Do some more. For sure. So, but yeah, if you if you need DME, if you want DME, and you're in the Dallas Metroplex. Yeah. That's the guy. Find yeah. us. You got. We have our socials on there, so you can find our page. Mm-hmm. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So we're there to help you guys. Yeah. Sweet. Right. Awesome. Bryce boys out. See you guys. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. <laughs>